you think I heard of Taco Bell? I googled diarrhea and your name came up. When it comes to Mexican food in the fast food arena, there is one king, Taco Bell, based out of Irvine, California. The history of this late night spot could actually be one of the more interesting background stories of any fast food giant. So let's delve into the top 10 untold truths of Taco Bell, the largest purveyor of tacos and burritos in the Western world. It's just Taco Bell, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Taco Bell was founded by Glenn Bell. There once was a chef named Glenn who dreamed of making tacos for the entire world. Taco Bell's logo is and has been some variation of a bell, and because of that, and its near omnipresence in every city, suburb, exurb, or truck stop, the name itself basically lost meaning, like when we talk about Target, despite its logo being a Target, or perhaps more ironically, Kmart. What's that K mean? The thousands of dollars it loses a minute? You can ship your pants right here. You hear that? I can ship my pants for free. Wow. The bell itself doesn't actually represent some sort of delicious bell-shaped taco, but rather it's the last name of the man who founded Taco Bell. Glenn Bell, like many fast food founders, started in the hot dog stand game. Do you want this wiener to go, or would you like to shove it up <laughs> right here? <laughs> His first was a hot dog stand slash drive-in in San Bernardino, California, a couple years after the end of World War II when the population and economy in the United States was quite literally booming. At only 25 years old, he opened another restaurant titled Bell's Hamburgers and Hot Dogs. In a long story short version of his biography, he got into the Mexican Tex-Mex game a few years later in late 1951 or early 1952 when he opened a taco stand under the name Taco Tia. That evolved into El Taco Taco with a partner who bought him out, which led Bell to open the first Taco Bell in Downey, California. We was right at Taco Bell, and I couldn't even get no more <laughs> quesadilla. We've got a bell too. Give it a tap and join our notification squad. And be sure to hit subscribe while you're at it. Taco Bell was owned by Pepsi. Chorizo tacos. Are you saying chorizo tacos? Don't play around because I'm super hungry. Have you ever noticed that you can only get Pepsi products at Taco Bell? That's not a coincidence, or even a multi-million dollar agreement like most fast food joints have with their pop provider. The reason why Taco Bell is all about Pepsi, and especially Mountain Dew and all the exclusive flavors they come up with just for Taco Bell, is that Pepsi actually owns Taco Bell. Look at me. Sure. I'm the captain now. Back in 1978, owner Glenn Bell sold Taco Bell to PepsiCo. They stayed in their original headquarters for almost 40 years, though, only moving to bigger and better digs in November of 2015, moving their HQ from Downey, California to Irvine, California. In 1997, PepsiCo actually spun off its fast food and created Tricon Global Restaurants. From there, in 2002, Tricon acquired another fast food restaurant company named Yorkshire. <laughs> and decided to rebrand itself as Yum Brands. Since Pepsi is still technically the owner of Yum, Taco Bell locations still exclusively serve Pepsi products. The tacos originally cost 19 cents and confused the heck out of people. Supersize my balls. Perhaps unsurprisingly, people didn't really know what to make of Mexican or Tex-Mex food back in the late 1940s and early 1950s. Keep in mind that this was also a time that people were introduced to pizza, as some of the soldiers who fought for the good guys during World War II ended up in Italy and discovered the deliciousness that was pizza and brought it back to the States. Tacos didn't require any war to end up in North America, but they were just as alien to a lot of people. It's basically an intergalactic invasion into this space through people. The idea was so foreign that people didn't even know how how to pronounce taco. Instead, they pronounce it as tacos, something that doesn't really make any sense, as phonetically, taco makes a lot more sense than taco, you know, because there's no Y or H in taco. Either way, people love the tacos and bought them en masse. It's Tuesday, Lisa. Taco Tuesday. Aww. Partly due to the fact that they only cost 19 cents a pop at Taco Bell founder Glenn Bell's first taco stand. I'm hungry. Let's get a taco. The first Taco Bell would blow your mind. Sorry, but I'm not a soft taco. I'm a hard, horny taco. The first Taco Bell finally opened in 1962, after founder Glenn Bell learned the ropes by owning a taco stand as well as multiple Mexican restaurants named El Taco. The first Taco Bell looked nothing like the Taco Bells of today, in basically every way possible. For starters, the store was 400 square feet, which is tiny compared to the average Taco Bell of today, which is typically anywhere between 1,800 and 2,200 square feet. The building was described as being mission-style, which means it looked like a stereotypical Mexican 
Mexican building. The original location didn't have any indoor seating or a drive through Instead, it only had a kitchen and an ordering window, with the kitchen obviously taking up most of the 400 square feet. There was seating outdoors, though, which was comprised of a few patio chairs and tables and a fire pit. Bell would hire a mariachi band from time to time to really hammer home the fact that they were eating tacos, I guess. You want to do something fun? You want to go to Taco Bell? The original Taco Bell logo was cray cray. I can't go to Taco Bell. I'm on an all carb diet. God, Karen, you are so stupid. If you ask anyone what the original logo for Taco Bell was, they'd probably point to the 80s to early 90s logo that basically just had a yellow bell in front of an orange yellow background with the words Taco Bell beneath it and typically the words drive through beneath that. That was actually not the original logo, not even close, as it was actually the fourth version of the logo. The original logo is sort of hard to find online, which makes you wonder what the people at Taco Bell are hiding. Destroy the child. Corrupt them all. Luckily for everyone, there are descriptions available as to what the logo looked like, and it sounds just awful. The original logo was very colorful and also lopsided. You can find part of it online, the part that spells out Taco Bell, with each letter having its own square and lopsided background. There was also a drawing of a man sleeping under a giant sombrero while sitting on top of a bell. That logo was quickly replaced by PepsiCo when they took over, as they knew the number one rule for creating a logo is to make it as simple as possible, or at least not super busy. Having each letter turned a different way, with different colors, and then also having a sleeping man under a sombrero, which is a stereotype that's pretty racist, who also happens to be on top of a bell, is clearly too busy, and is probably why they scrubbed it from the internet. 59.79.99 changed the fast food game. You like tacos? It's Tuesday. If you were lucky enough to be alive in the early 90s, or at least somewhat sentient, you might remember the promotion that Taco Bell ran at the time, as it was advertised on television, the radio, and billboards like crazy. That promotion was the 59.79.99 value promotion, and the numbers weren't the combination for the safe at Taco Bell's headquarters, but rather was something that makes dollar menus look overpriced and greedy. Those numbers were a reference to the value menu at Taco Bell, with each number referencing a price point. That means that Taco Bell offered a super wide range of options from tacos to nachos, cinnamon twists to more tacos at either 59 cents, 79 cents, or 99 cents. Beginning in 1991, the campaign was not only heavily advertised, but it was also a gigantic success in that it increased same store sales at Taco Bell restaurants by 60%, which helped Taco Bell become the top performing fast food company in the nation at the time, according to Harvard Business Review. Now, all restaurants are Taco Bell. No way. The promotion put a ton of pressure on Taco Bell's competition, and because of that, you could say that the 59 79 99 promotion basically created the dollar menu at most burger chains. Not too shabby for what was once a Taco stand. Oh. Ah. Oh, what is that emanation? The Yokiero Taco Bell dog caused a $42 million lawsuit and no uptick in sales. Yokiero Taco Bell. After the success of the 59.79.99 promotion, sales began to stagnate at Taco Bell. Because of that, they decided to come up with a can't-miss advertising concept. And you'd think, if you were alive at the time, that they hit a home run with their Yokiero Taco Bell commercials. Gretchen. I'm sorry I laughed at you that time you got diarrhea at Barnes & Noble. Those commercials starred a chihuahua named Gidget, whose catchphrase was Spanish for, I want Taco Bell. Those ads became a cultural phenomenon, and you'd think that would translate into monster sales for Taco Bell, as those ads, along with their follow-ups, the less popular Viva Gordita and Drop the Chalupa spots, seemed to be everywhere. However, despite the fact that you couldn't go anywhere without hearing someone with no personality of their own spouting Yo Quiero Taco Bell, those ads didn't translate into any uptick in sales. Taco Bell was then sued in 2003 by two advertising agency executives who claimed that they came up with the concept for the ads. Taco Bell ended up settling that lawsuit, which was filed in court and asked for $42 million, which means that those ads ended up most likely losing Taco Bell money. Gidget, however, ended up starring in a movie, Legally Blonde 2 with Reese Witherspoon, and lived a full life until she passed away at the age of 15. Viva, Viva Gorditas! Taco Bell colluded with the Russians. Oh, <laughs> 
Alright, everybody, drop your tacos or I'll blow your brains out. Multiple cartoons have had a plot in which a businessman or supervillain wants to put their logo on the moon in what would be the best advertising of all time. While Taco Bell hasn't gone that far, they did actually work with Russia back in 2001. I must break you. To take advantage of the fact that the Russian space station, Mir, was going to be brought down after 15 years orbiting the Earth. The problem with bringing down a space station like that, as we recently found out with China's doomed space station, Xiangong 1, is that it's hard to really control or or figure out where that space station is actually going to land. And by land, we mean crash to Earth at insane speeds. Meanwhile, at the crusty crack. Taco Bell took advantage of this uncertainty in what is admittedly an amazing promotion. A promotion in which they offered everyone in America a free taco if the Mir space station ended up landing on a giant floating bullseye that they placed in the South Pacific not too far off the coast of Australia. Now, the odds of the space station actually hitting the target was worse than someone winning the Powerball while getting hit by lightning, but the publicity that came from the promotion would have covered the cost for the 250 million people that lived in the United States at the time. Of course, Mir didn't end up coming close to the target, and Taco Bell didn't have to dole out millions of free tacos. Mexicans versus Mexican food. I don't know how people think this is good, because it's not. Taco Bell's parent company, Yum Brands, is one of the largest fast food companies in the world based on system units, as it has over 45,000 restaurants around the world. While not all of those locations are Taco Bells, a lot of them are, and they are based all over the world, bringing Mexican food to people in places like the Middle East, Asia, Iceland and Russia. Do you have anything besides Mexican food? If you've ever been to Mexico or eaten at a traditional Mexican restaurant, this won't come as any surprise, but the one market that Taco Bell has had the most problem cracking is actually Mexico. Yum! opened their first location in Mexico back in 1992 in Mexico City, which is one of the biggest cities in the world and would, you'd think, literally eat up what Taco Bell had to offer. However, that location closed in under two years thanks to poor sales, and it took a full decade and a half for them to try again in Mexico, opening a location in Monterey in 2007. That restaurant didn't fare much better, and again, it really isn't that much of a surprise as Taco Bell is at best Tex-Mex, which is just another way of saying that it's Americanized Mexican food. Mexican tacos, for example, are mostly meat, cilantro, and onions. Things like tomatoes, cheese, and especially sour cream are considered American-style tacos. So bringing Taco Bell to Mexico would be like a Mexican restaurant opening a hamburger franchise in the United States that puts celery on its burgers. No, yo mejor me camino aquí en taco. The Taco Bell Doritos Loco Taco required a lot of hard work and engineering. Come well, on, let's get some tacos. One of the most popular items that Taco Bell has ever introduced is the Doritos Loco Taco, a concoction that substitutes the typical taco shell with one that is made solely of Doritos chips. La tortilla is de, es de Doritos. See? You'd think that it'd be easy to convert Doritos, which are chips, into a taco shell. However, Doritos chips are actually a lot different than taco shells in terms of how they're made and how structurally sound they are. Because of that, Taco Bell had a hard time actually making this idea work. It took over two years and over 40 different recipes for them to perfect the science behind the Doritos Loco Taco Shell. Is math related to science? <laughs> a struggle that was summed up by Steve Gomez, a food innovation expert at Taco Bell. What, do you got a team of monkeys working around the clock on this? He said that they had a team of engineers working day and night to get just the seasoning right, let alone somehow converting a typical shell into one that looked and tasted like the most iconic chips in the game. The hard work paid off as Taco Bell has reportedly sold more than half a billion Doritos Locos tacos since they debuted back in 2012. Yes, science! Yum, indeed. The recipe for following us is easy. Just click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And don't go anywhere. Stick around and check out some of our other great videos.